How you doing, fam? Bam, this is Chris Mizo here. If you know how my usual voice sounds, it doesn't sound like this. And unfortunately, I'm still sick. But I want to continue and give you the best news possible because I have some very interesting news, especially from NVIDIA. The real question is, did we all just get played? Did we get scammed by NVIDIA? I know a lot of you out there are probably like, this is nothing new. This is very good of NVIDIA's marketing, and I'll explain why, because we have some official benchmark numbers out from NVIDIA themselves to share exactly how powerful the RTX 50, 50 series really is. So let me get straight to it, because first, I just want to go over the power of the original 40 series cards. As you know, it required a 850 watt uh, power supply in order to for your PC in order for you to power up something like the RTX 4090. So it would require at least a minimum of 450 watts out the power supply in order for you to power that GPU. Keep it in mind because it's gonna get good. The RTX 4080, it required you to have at least a 800 watt power supply and it would power it up at least to 325 watts. And again, important numbers to remember because I'm just going to go over the 50 series. The 50 series, it requires a little bit more oomph and a little bit more power because the RTX 5080, it requires at least 850 watts, similar to the RTX 4090, and it would power it up to 360 watts. And now for the RTX 5090, it requires at least 1000 watts of power for your PC in order for it to power up to 575 watts. I know it's a lot of power and it's pretty demanding because how just how good is this power for the benchmarks, especially with Blackwell over Ada Lovelace. Remember, there is some new technologies in the RTX 50 series. The 40 series will also get the update for the LSS4, so will the 30 series. It's just that the only thing that the 50 series will have over those versions over the 30 and the 40 series is the frame generation. So it boasts a new neural network and on top of it has that new transformer model that really helps the DLSS perform really well. In fact, it is the multi-frame generation. It helps boost the image quality and on top of it, the performance overall. Additionally, Reflex 2, is employs a novel approach on controlling latencies, promising improved responsiveness. So Reflex 2, and that will also be on the 30 series and 40 series. Just make sure you stay tuned because I do have those benchmark numbers coming up. I just gotta explain the technologies really quick to you. <coughs> there it is, my cold. But there is some of the technologies that I had to share with you with NVIDIA's DLSS4, same with some of the NVIDIA's highlights, such as the super resolution, how it's able to pick up the frames. I kind of explained a little bit of it in my last video, but it also has ray reconstruction, which really also helps it, and it helps the lighting even in the most complicated scenery. Now, originally the 40 series, it required to use the optical flow, and that's how the LSS 3.5 will work on it. Instead of doing that, it has that new neural network in the 50 series. VRAM consumption will be a consumed a lot less. You can expect great performance without taking up so much capacity of the VRAM. When it comes to multi-frame generation, it's also important to know that it's Again, this is exclusively only on the 50 series on this end of the stick. Now, with the 50 series, which is the whole 50 series, including the 50, even the 5070, that the DLSS MFG will build upon the concept of DLSS frame generation, and that will bring it to a whole nother level. Instead of one AI image, it's gonna go between two different images. In essence, what it will do, it was it would output five output frame generated by DLSS MFG, only two rendered while the remaining three are AI. So that kind of gives you the imagery to the high frame rates. So that instead of just getting those two frames, you're getting five frames 
thanks to the frame generation. So you can expect that to highly improve and then DLSS4 manufacturing should have a much better frame pace compared to say DLSS3 or DLSS3.5. The metric is no longer handled heavily by your PC, such as the CPU. Instead, it's going to go off of the GPU. And because it requires more power out the GPU, hence this is again why they had such a high power output, it will be able to produce the image for you. So they call this hardware flip metering. Anyway, the process of the display engine goes into the GPU and then it will be significantly more controlled. Now the new neural network by NVIDIA, it will also have rendered the LSS ray reconstruction and it will do frame generations backwards compatibility and hence why NVIDIA's 50 series can support up to 75 game titles once it is released. So there is 75 game titles that already will have support of the LSS4. So meaning, <coughs> there it is again, sorry, excuse me once again. DLSS 4 will be supported up to 75 titles. It doesn't quite say if they're going to be strictly, directly just DLSS 4 titles or it's going to be a mixture of DLSS 3. There, there goes a part of NVIDIA's magician trick right there. Half of the titles, like 37 it would be, maybe 37 of the titles would be uh, just regular DLSS 3 and the other 37 are just DLSS 4. That's something, again, that will be remain to be seen until the release. But anyway, more importantly, let me go over to the whole uh, benchmark part because that is what everybody wants to see. Now, more interestingly enough, remember how NVIDIA mentioned that the 5070 is just as power as the, powerful as the 4090. And here's what I find really interesting and what many people found interesting, especially across the internet here. When you, what you are looking at on this chart is 4K by 240 hertz. Maybe I give them the benefit of the doubt right there. But then here it says that they do have RTX 5090 and DLSS4 activated on it. Now they do have a comparison as you see that in the gray that has DLSS is off and DLSS3 and 4 comparisons right next to each other. As you see, again, this is the RTX 5090. Now, when you compare those together, you can see how much of an increment increase. It's almost five times as powerful than the without having any DLSS on. And now with the raw power, it's saying for the 4K 240 hertz, for example, Hogwarts Legacy is pushing about a little bit, just about 100 frames raw power. But now they're saying that with DLSS, you can push as high as up to almost 500. Now, even with a more demanding game such as Cyberpunk, it's saying that you can only push about almost only about 50 frames with just raw power. But with the LSS4, you can get an incredible almost 250 frames per second with the LSS4. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Make sure you listen really closely because here we get an idea of just how powerful the... Now, when you're taking a look at the RTX 5080 now, now, this doesn't exactly give you more details if the monitor is on a 4K display, but assuming that it is a 4K display, you look at such as Resident Evil 4, and you can see that it's about at a scale of one times. Now, when you compare it over to a original RTX 4080 or RTX 4090, when it comes to the um, usage or when it comes to ray tracing, you're getting, for the 4090, you're getting about 118 frames per second. So what that is telling you right then and there, not even the RTX 5080 is a match for the RTX 5090. And the reason why you can draw that conclusion is you can see how out different the output numbers are. Again, this is more of an estimation, but from what it seems like, did we just get played by NVIDIA? If you take a look at some of these other numbers here, now for the RTX 5080, you're getting a decent numbers on Frostpunk, almost double the numbers. Now in the gray is compared to a RTX 4080. Now, more importantly, look over at Cyberpunk 2077 and you'll notice that it's at a one-time scale compare. And then once it gets the LSS 
four, it's only at a two times scale. Now let's go back over to the 5090, right? And you can see with Cyberpunk, it also doubles. And this is for the 5090. Uh, Cyberpunk on a RTX 4080, just say, between about 56 to about 60 frames per second with a RTX 4080 with Cyberpunk 2077. And that's with DLSS on now and ray tracing. So if you really double that power, you're getting about almost 110 frames per second. And that's almost close to the RTX 4090. But personally, when I benchmarked it with ray tracing and everything on, when it comes to the RTX 4090, I get about 126 to 127 frames. And the RTX 5080 can't beat the RTX 4090, let alone the, the RTX 5070. But then again, I could be wrong. This is all from what I see from speculation, just from just researching the different benchmark numbers. And again, it's not really making a lot of sense. And something I really want to do is the whole real world testing when these cards do get released, because I know a lot of you out there don't want to spend your hard earned money on a card, especially if you have a 40 series already, or if you're holding onto a 30 series, you really want to see if it's worth the upgrade. Now, personally to me, what I saved the most is that the VRAM usage is at almost 10 gigabytes when it comes to Resident Evil 4. And again, Resident Evil 4 was a very a reason why I'm using this as one of the examples in Cyberpunk is because they're actually a lot better optimized than a lot of other games out there. And that's a lot of the issues that we're running into with a lot more popular titles now is that there is less and less optimization and developers are getting more lazier and just kind of want the uh, hardware manufacturers to kind of figure out what to do and what's the easiest solution for you guys to be able to run our games without us wasting our time to optimize these games. And that's a large issue, let alone we don't like fabrications of the truth when it comes to graphics cards because we also like to know the truth of things as well. Nvidia even themselves confirm that the non-DLSS ray tracing uplift is about, now keyword ray tracing uplift is about 30% faster than the RTX 4090 and that the RTX 5080 is 15% faster than the 4080 and the 5070 Ti. They kind of give you an indicator right then and there that the 5080 is more closer resemblance of the 4080 so i don't know why they kind of mentioned that we're kind of getting mixed truths here and it was quite a bit of a fabrication for them to say the rtx 5070 is just as powerful as the rtx 4090 and we could be proven wrong this is just all based off their speculation and their own benchmarks that we're comparing it to. Fam, guys, I hope you found this content very useful. If you didn't, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And also, if you're not part of the big, wonderful fam, man, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. If you know anybody else that's into PC and tech, make sure you share this video and make sure you stay tuned because I will announce the winner on one of my videos upcoming this week. And more than likely, it's going to be on AMD's GPU. And make sure you stay tuned to RX 9070 because I want to talk to you guys about that. I will announce the winner there. Make sure you follow my X handle for all the newest updates as well. And don't forget, I can't wait for one of you guys to win. And I will be doing a lot more giveaways, especially this year, because I want to really thank all of you for being part of the fan band. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.